This is the guts of a Ryobi 40 volt OP406 high rate 295 watt charger. Uh, just got this today and it was making a bit of a rattly noise and um, turns out that the uh, heat shrink had split on one of the main input rectification electrolytics and this insulating disc was just flopping around in the case. So yeah. First time I've ever seen that. Uh, kind of damage to the heat shrink. But uh, anyways, first off there's stuff on the inside of the cover which is um, a fan which again is needed because this is a high power charger. That circuit board down there which is just a uh, breakout board for the front panel idiot light to connect to the uh, to its wiring harness and this thing down here which is the contact assembly that mates with the battery of course this red wire on the left that is the incoming positive hot charge the battery this thick black wire is the neutral or negative hot or whatever battery return white wire is a thermistor connection so that way the charger can monitor the battery's internal temperature and this thin black wire which goes to this split contact on the right and the reason for that is so that the charger can tell that a battery has been inserted because when a battery is inserted its uh, negative terminal bridges out these two contacts and so when this wire is pulled to ground, well, or DC hot, or DC negative hot, uh, neutral, whatever. The uh, charging brain box knows the battery's been inserted. Speaking of which, all the main actual charging control stuff is on this daughter board right here. Fairly thin PCB stack. And this is a microcontroller which I can't easily read the part number of. Plus, uh, various passives and a couple of operational amplifiers. There's an LM324 there, LM358 there. I actually can't remember if the LM358 is an operational amplifier or comparator, but either way, uh, that's just providing analog um, buffering, what have you, filter, possibly some active filters, judging by all the components there. Uh, so the brain box knows what's going on. Then over here, this is the AC main input section. Um, of course, a couple components which weren't fitted. Uh, this thing right here isn't electronic. This is just a foam sticky pad to help hold the fan in place. Um, there's an inductor that would be populated there, technically an input choke. One there, and there'd be a position for a capacitor there, so this would just basically be a big uh, um, LC filter network. And the one filter, or the one that was populated there see it's actually fairly interesting construction instead of magnet wire it uses magnet strip where this is enameled copper strip instead of round profile wire so that's somewhat interesting construction detail and then this thing back here that is not a capacitor for those of you first getting into electronics that is actually a, a negative temperature coefficient thermistor its job is to limit the spark when the thing is first plugged in because otherwise the charging current of these two capacitors would be quite high and it can with time damage the plug the receptacle these capacitors because especially because these are no name chinesium acon branded those are going to get replaced at some point um, and it also stresses the diodes in this, which is the main input rectifier. Interesting that they used a bridge rectifier because in this, which is a 120 volt version of this charger, um, buried down under this elastic are a couple of jumper wires which convert this whole, rec this whole rectifier filter section into a potential doubler rectifier. So that means that the actual guts of this thing work on about 300 odd volts DC and uh, so this might be convertible to 240 volts uh, but it depends on what the standby supply 
uh, runs on, which I will get to in a minute. So, yeah. Then down here, this is the standby supply transformer. Also, some interesting construction detail. It has a um, insulated secondary in this little plastic stick-out bit of the transformer uh, frame. So that means that the that provides a lot of electrical isolation between the primary and the secondary. So interesting construction detail there. Then over here, this heat sink, which is for the main drive fits of the main power transformer the main power transformer which you can see from all the uh, lits wire in it um, fairly important for something that operates at this frequency in this power range because secondary this thing is going to be handling a good you know, 8 odd amperes at uh, full chooch especially into a low battery when its potential is only 30 something volts and then the main output rectification which is on this um, Sink. And just one last note for the top side. It's got a, a thermistor on the main output heat sink, which is good to see. The output capacitors. And despite the similarity to the layout of these, these are just wired in parallel, so those two negatives are bonded together on the bottom side of the PCB, as are the positive connections of the caps. And these blue things is one last, last note. These are Y caps. These are used for interference suppression, basically to ground out RF schmoo generated in this part of the switch mode supply to the mains input, which from an RF standpoint is effectively ground. And it's also a very good thing to see how they've uh, doubled up both of them. These are the Y caps for the main power supply, these are the Y caps for the uh, auxiliary power supply. Because what can happen is very rarely these Y caps can fail short. Well, it's about any capacitor can fail short depending on the design. And should one of those fail short, it'll still, you know, the other capacitor will still provide isolation. Because what a Y cap is for, these are these um, blue, usually ceramic capacitors that you'll see in a lot of electronics. That is a safety class of capacitor which is designed to safely connect you, the sensitive human jelly bag, and anything that you can touch to lethal electrocution threshold levels like 120, 240, whatever volt AC, angry pixies from the wall. And then on the bottom side of the board, again, pretty much what you'd expect. Uh, this is all the um, noise filtration stuff that I was showing earlier. These two diodes are used as part of the power supply for this auxiliary um, um, brain box power supply, basically. That is what keeps the um, main microcontroller and stuff running when there isn't a battery in this so that way it's not constantly running the um, main switch mode supply over here Again, those are the two jumpers I was alluding to earlier that connect this uh, trace which is the midpoint of the uh, pair of capacitors to one of the AC inputs then over here this uh, uh, that chip, which is an MPS20, either 31 or 81, but that's the main switching control supply chip for the main um, power supply. Then those two pairs of three pins there and there. Those are the two FETs. Um, it is not push pull. What it is is. There's a connection on the transformer, that one right there, which is, I think, okay, that's thin, so that's going to be an EM shield, so just uh, basically some copper tape inside the uh, thing, just for something to ground out electromagnetic noise. Then that pin right there is connected to the DC ground, or DC neutral, 
through this capa uh, film capacitor right across these two pins. That one right there. And then this pin right here is alternately pulled high and uh, up to the you know positive 300 volts or 350 volts, whatever. Technically, they're like in the neighborhood of like 320, 330, and to DC ground. And so, at a high enough switching frequency, that capacitor is just going to be repeatedly charged and discharged through the transformer primary. And it's a way of getting um, much more efficient power density out of a transformer of the size than using a single-ended drive the way the uh, second or the uh, auxiliary supply does because that one only has to supply a couple of watts so that one you can be a lot more free in terms of your input potential ranges. Anyways, going on to the uh, output section, there's all the row of pin headers or the row of pins for the daughter board that the micro is on. That fit right there, which is just the on off to electrically connect the battery. That's so that uh, when the thing's done charging, that fit opens and um, or turns off because if it opened, it would be dead. And that just in theory prevents the uh, battery from getting discharged, although there would still be a little bit of discharge from the various um, metrology dividers and everything. And then a couple of um, diodes and other stuff as well as current sensing right there. That pair of uh, 30 milliohm resistors. And then that potential regulator that might... I know that, that may be an auxiliary supply for the microcontroller because it looks a bit big to just be a reference or something. And then those uh, divider, not dividers, the uh, optocouplers for the uh, auxiliary supply and then this optocoupler which is the feedback signal for the main power supply and also Looking at the number of connections, well, because it's only got this, it doesn't have a separate enable signal. It's probably this main microcontroller on the daughter board is also probably messing with its feedback signal to use it as a way of uh, shutting this off when there's no battery to charge, or when the battery is charged and wants to shut the thing off so it's not using a bunch of electricity. So, yeah, overall, looks pretty much like what I'd expect, you know especially for this price point. Also fairly interesting in a production device, they're still on uh, Rev 0.3 on the board. You can see May 8th, 2019 design date, even though it was made week uh, 45 of 2020. That's you know, somewhat interesting, especially from an engineering standpoint.